Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and to another video. I'm feeling really good today, I'm feeling really excited because um, I'm just feeling good. So that's that. I hope you all are doing okay and you're having a good week so far. Um, I do want to start off this video by saying thank you so much to all of you over the past couple of weeks here on YouTube, also on Instagram, who um, shared all of your congratulatory messages about uh, my and Sean's engagement. We got engaged at the end of September. So um, just thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. But today's video is all about intuitive eating. That's what I want to talk about today. And I did a poll on Instagram last week asking uh, if you guys knew what intuitive eating was or if you were familiar with it or if you knew what it meant. And over 50% of those who um, voted on the little poll did not know what intuitive eating was or you know were familiar with it. I realized what better way to, you know, educate you a little bit more about intuitive eating and just give you some information about what it is than to start with the basics. So let's first start by talking about what intuitive eating even is in the first place. And so intuitive eating is an evidence-based uh, eating framework that involves elements of psychology, behavior change, self-awareness, um, intuition and instinct, kind of combines all of those things. And it was developed in 1995 by two registered dietitians, Evelyn Trebol and Elise Rush. Um, in 1995, did I say that? I'm not sure, I can't remember if I said 1995. At its core, intuitive eating is a way of tuning into and, and connecting with your body and your unique needs and a way that you are learning to trust your body and the various biological signals that we receive every single day, such as hunger levels and fullness. It's also weight inclusive, okay? So it's aligned with something known as health at every size. So there are some pretty significant positive uh, psychological, you know, mental, emotional, physical, benefits of eating intuitively. Things like improving your self-esteem, your body image, reducing anxiety and depression, um, helping to reduce eating disorders or disordered e eating behaviors, even reducing obesity in some cases, um, and really just improving overall quality of life. So intuitive eating is made up of 10 principles that work by helping us meet our biological and psychological needs through cultivating awareness of physical sensations and body cues and signals you can find the, you know these original 10 principles at, I'll leave a link to them below I'm just gonna be kind of covering them in today's video and sharing you know my perspective on them so let's get started principle number one is to reject the diet mentality we are inundated all of the time left right and center with diets quick fixes do's and don'ts eat this don't eat this weight loss plans, plans all over the place, you know, that make promises that we're gonna feel a certain way or look a certain way, that we feel we need to eat perfectly clean all of the time, right? Good versus bad uh, foods. And when we are rejecting the diet mentality, we are letting go of all of these rules that we feel the need to adhere to, that make us feel like a failure every time we fall off of the wagon or you know we're not able to stick to a diet because we don't have enough willpower, you know, these kinds of things. That's what we want to let go of. It has been demonstrated time and time again that dieting, especially when it involves you know, your classic um, calorie deprivation type diets, uh, they, they are, are, have been demonstrated to really go against our biology and to usually fail. They're really hard to stick to, they're not sustainable, and instead can create a lot of issues like weight stigma, weight cycling, right? So gaining weight and losing weight and gaining weight and losing weight, um, and eating disorders, disordered eating behaviors, low self-esteem, you name it. Number two is to honor your hunger. This is such an important principle when it comes to intuitive eating and a really helpful skill that you can learn to develop over time if you're not already maybe used to this. So hunger is your body's way of signaling to you that it needs 
fuel. That's what hunger is, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a biological response, it's a primal need that we have is to receive fuel. Now, it is very important though that we are honoring our hunger when we feel hungry and that we are supplying our body with adequate macronutrients like carbohydrates and fats and proteins so that we can you know, help balance our blood sugar and help provide us with energy. Restricting food can trigger a very primal drive to overeat. Um, because reaching the point of excessive hunger, right? We're ravenously hungry. We are just so incredibly hungry. Um, you know, it's almost impossible at that point to eat in a very sensible, conscious, you know, kind of mindful way. So when we learn to trust our bodies and tune into our hunger signals before we reach that point, we learn that we can trust our bodies again. Number three is to make peace with food. So I have talked about this actually in my video on improving your relationship with food. So if you've seen that video, then you've heard me talk about this, but this is the third principle of intuitive eating that I want to um, share with you all, of course, again in this video. So making peace with food is Mm. It's pretty mind-blowing actually when you understand when you better understand what it means to allow yourself permission you give yourself the permission to eat all foods that exist to have to allow all foods to exist in your diet so here's the thing when we deprive ourselves of a specific kind of food or a specific food group or we restrict certain foods from our diet it actually makes us want those foods even more it makes those foods hold more power over us and what happens is it it's very likely leads to feelings of intense deprivation and an uncontrollable craving to the point where we, you know, we finally access that food and we just, you know, binge on it. This is um, often where a cycle of binge eating can kind of be born out of. This is also known as a start and stop cycle, right? So the first thing that you're doing is you are telling yourself you're gonna eat perfectly, you're not gonna eat XYZ food, those are bad foods, they're off limits. You go a little while doing that, you start to feel really deprived, you start to feel like it's really hard for you to keep up this willpower of avoiding that food, you finally give in, you eat it, maybe you binge eat, um, or you, you, know, you overeat this food, you feel really guilty, you feel shameful, and then you enter the next phase again of restricting it all over again. So it's just this cycle that goes and goes and goes. Now giving yourself to eat, giving yourself to eat, giving yourself permission to eat all foods doesn't mean eating chocolate cake and potato chips all day every day it's actually quite the opposite when you give yourself permission to allow all foods to exist in your diet you discover that a lot of these foods that were once forbidden become no longer as exciting as they once were so basically the novelty wears off this is also known as food habituation where the more you are exposed to a certain kind of food or foods um, the less exciting they become they're just not exciting anymore over time, you learn to trust your body again and learn that your body is able to signal to you that it actually wants healthy, nutritious foods and it doesn't want chocolate cake all of the time or whatever this forbidden food is. Now, I do want to point out here that of course, there are some cases where certain people need to avoid certain kinds of foods, such as in the case of a medical condition or an illness or allergy, intolerance, that kind of thing. So of course, there are specialty diets that are in place for people who need them. But what I'm talking about here is you know, that desire to avoid foods for weight loss or because there's fear or guilt involved in eating that food. Number four is to challenge the food Police, the food police. Who knew there was such thing as food police? Well, there is, there is. So the food police really are, uh, is kind of made up of the thoughts, the beliefs, the stories that we tell in our heads, that we tell ourselves about eating a certain way, okay? The food police are the thoughts that we have that this food is bad, that food is good, I shouldn't eat that, I'm bad if I eat that, why did I do that? You know, uh, like these thoughts that, that make you feel stressed around food, that make you feel guilty around food, um, that make 
food become a stressful thing for you, okay? And we all have experienced this food police in our lives. We've all done it. And maybe even right now, you can think of some examples of when you have thought this way. The food police is rooted deep inside of us, kind of deep in our psyche, usually from many, many years of dieting beliefs or behaviors, food beliefs, food rules that we have developed over time. Becoming aware of your inner food police by simply observing the thoughts that you're having, um, you know, asking yourself where these thoughts are coming from with very compassionate curiosity and perhaps replacing some of those thoughts with more positive, um, you know, kind or, or compassionate phrases can really help you along your journey of tuning out that food police and no longer letting it control you. Number five, principle number five is to discover the satisfaction factor. Mm. There's so much that makes up our eating experience, okay? Tradition, culture, social connection, friends, family, um, you know, the environment that we create around mealtime, right? Having a very warm, comforting, inviting environment, feeling comfortable, feeling good around food. All of these things help to cu cultivate a sense of satisfaction from the food that we eat. You know, when we have these things in place, food is no longer just about food where you are sitting at your counter, you know, scarfing down a burrito. Um, you're finding so much more satisfaction and pleasure out of the eating experience that no longer makes you feel like you have to overindulge or you have this desire to overindulge because you're feeling so thoroughly satisfied on all levels. Number six is to feel your Fullness. Alongside trusting ourselves to eat the foods that we intuitively desire and, and giving ourselves the permission to do so, um, what's also key here is making sure that we're paying attention and tuning in to our bodily signals that let us know that we are full and no longer hungry. So we can tune into this better by really just practicing more mindfulness around mealtime. So slowing down with your meals, putting your fork down um, in between bites you know, chewing thoroughly, um, but pausing in the middle of your meal and asking yourself, what are my hunger levels at? Am I still feeling pretty hungry? Am I starting to approach a feeling of fullness? Am I starting to feel satisfied? Um, just being really mindful about where you're at and how you're feeling. Principle of intuitive eating number seven is to cope with your emotions with kindness. So anxiety, anger, uh, frustration, sadness, loneliness, boredom, these are feelings or emotional states that all of us experience sometimes. Um, and food can act as a way to comfort us, to distract us, to numb us. Um, but it doesn't help in the long term with getting to the root of why we are feeling that way. It cannot fix these things. And what we're doing with intuitive eating is that we're learning to check in with ourselves with not only what we're eating, but why we are eating it. So what you can do here is you can ask yourself simply why it is that you tend to reach for a certain food sometimes. And having self-compassion is really, really key here. Then through patience and learning new coping strategies, we can learn to comfort and nurture and self-regulate um, and kind of resolve these underlying issues instead of always resorting to food as our solution. Number eight, principle number eight is to respect your body. This is a really fantastic principle here. And this principle is all about um, developing a, you know, a deep acceptance and kind of appreciation for your body and your genetic blueprint. It is really quite the perspective shift when you can start to recognize and, and remember that everybody's bodies are vastly different. Everyone has very different bodies. I am five foot two. I will never be a six foot one supermodel. You know, I, I can't get there. I can't do that. <laughs> I, you know, I'm a shorter person, whatever. Start to get into this practice of really deeply 
um, appreciating and respecting what your body is capable of. When we shift our perspective from what we look like to what our bodies are able to do for us, it makes it so much easier for us to let go of a dieting mentality where we are being you know, unrealistic or hypercritical of our bodies. Bodies jiggle skin wrinkles like you know these things are all normal and it's it's all okay principle number nine we're almost at the end here i love this principle it's something that i have you know really been putting into practice for probably most of my life um it's just something that i really jive with and that is try to shift your perspective from believing that exercise should always be really high intensity, sweating profusely, or only about burning calories or getting to some end goal of looking a certain way. Um, instead, shift your perspective to focus on how it physically feels to move your body. Our bodies are designed to move and focus on how good it feels to actually move your body sometimes, um, but in a variety of ways, ways that feel good for you, not just in a way that you feel like you're supposed to be doing, right? It doesn't have to be so intense all of the time. It can be if you're feeling it, but it doesn't have to be all of the time. A lot of the time for me, I really love just going for a walk. Other times, and this is one of my favorites, I love turning up the music and dancing around my living room. But another thing that sometimes I like to do is sometimes I have this pent up energy from sitting all day and I want to like, you know, race up a set of stairs because I just have this energy and that's just what I feel like doing. But it's, it's not that I'm doing it because I feel like I have to do it. I'm doing it because I can feel that my body is like craving some specific kind of movement. We are not robots. Our needs and our preferences change all of the time and that's totally okay. Alrighty, we are at principle number 10. This video is a little lengthy on the lengthy side, but that's okay. Principle number 10 is to honor your health with gentle nutrition. And the reason why this point is last is actually because you know, all of the points before are sort of helping us to heal our relationship with food before we become uh, you know, I want to say like obsessive about the nutrition of food, right? It, nutrition is very, very important. It's really important for us to honor our health, but um, we want to make sure that we have a comfortable, healthy, non-anxious relationship with food first. So um, this point is all about making food choices that you know, that taste good for you, that you enjoy, and that also um, nourish your body, right? That honor your health, that make you feel good. But at the same time, understanding that it is not about being perfect. It's not about eating perfectly all of the time. We do not need to eat perfectly clean at all times in order to lead a healthy lifestyle or in order to eat well. You know, one meal or one day's worth of eating or a couple of days worth of eating does not determine our state of health and the way that we eat changes sometimes right uh, things pop up in our schedule things happen whatever you know it, it, then that's okay <laughs> that is kind of what this is all about it's about yeah making choices that make you feel good that nourish your body um, but knowing that it you know it's okay to not be perfect so that brings us to the end of everything kind of about intuitive eating I really hope that you feel like you have learned a lot more about what intuitive eating is and if it's something that you kind of resonate with. If you're wanting to know how you could get started with you know, practicing some of this intuitive eating and integrating some of these skills and uh, into your life, you know, read the book Intuitive Eating by Evelyn Tribble and Elise Rush if you have not read that book before um, because it actually goes into a lot more detail than what I'm sharing with you here today. I'm really just covering the basics, um, but read that book. You can even check out their website as well. I'm gonna leave various resources in the description box below. I also have a full blog post with resources there as well that covers everything I've talked about today. And I feel like this is a really long video, um, but I hope that you have found it helpful. Thank you for sticking with me today and I will see you in the next one.